This one should do the job. Oh, that's tight. No obvious reason why that should have been the case. Okay. Into the shutter itself. Let's have a look at this. Diaphragm looks a little bit oily. It doesn't seem ridiculously stiff, but it's probably not as good as it should be. See if we can get this apart. Find the right screwdriver here, we'll be in business. That one, I think. This is just a screwdriver that I've modified to leave two points to get into that screw. And we'll just rotate that because that just bayonets on. Remove this ring, this is the shutter speed settings cam plate. You can see that that's a bit of dried grease there. So that means that would have been having a tendency to be sticky. In the picture only just, I'll just unhook that spring. Unhook this main spring from the main lever. What's that catching on? Yeah, that's all a bit greasy. Okay, we're into it. Let's take the outer case off. Two screws at the back here. There's a third hole, but that goes nowhere and does nothing. So don't be hunting around for the third screw that never existed. You've just got to disconnect their flash connection wire, which is in here. That seems to be driven in a long way. Let's hope that the uh, insulator is still in place. The shutter release fell out while we were doing that. And this is the detents for the uh, aperture settings. And with that out of the way, I can tell exactly how stiff that diaphragm is, and it's too stiff. Okay, that'll be oil doing that. Right, let's take this thing apart. I'll see if I can zoom you in a bit. Okay, well I'll start by removing this gear over here. This is the flash sink mechanism. Just remove this is the B lever I'm taking off now. There's its return spring, there's the B lever. If that's got its end broken off, it doesn't work. You don't have to see that very often, but it's it's one of those things that you do see from time to time. cover off. Okay, we've got two little brass standoffs there. I've got to unhook this spring here from the for the flash sink mechanism. Take this off. This is two pieces this arm that come apart. They're only held together with a fine spring. Don't be surprised if that comes apart on you. It's not the end of the world. Just remove this screw, which allows me to get out the moving flash contact and its little control arm. You can lift out the 500th of a second spring, lift out this cam from the flash sync settings, lift out the pallets. Okay. Now there should be a little plastic insulator slug inside that flash contact, so I'll remove the screw. Now 
nothing's falling out it might still be in place that's okay back up the screw here and see if we can push the flash contact out of the case be very gentle doing this they're inclined to be fragile they're inclined to be a lot stiffer than that one okay I can see that the little flash contact here the insulator slug is in, in place it's still present and correct that's a pleasant surprise if it's not there it means that basically the uh, flash wouldn't have worked because it would have been shorted out Right, so we've got three screws hold the case together. This holds the mechanism plate into the case. And with these three screws out the way, this immediately splits into two major sub-assemblies, I'd say, I think you can say. Let's get this apart. Oh, it's stiff. Okay, not sure why that should be so reluctant to move. Okay, we're, we're, we're right. All right, there we have it. So, here's the mechanism plate with the shutter blades present. They look a little bit oily. There's a bit of a, a line around that shutter blade there. And here's the diaphragm in, in the case itself. And those blades are certainly a bit oily. Nothing terrible. Um, this is a little bit stiff to move. Nothing particularly bad. It will certainly benefit from a service. The shutter blade should just tip out. And they did. That's good. If they don't tip out, it means that they were glued in place with the oil. If they tip out and they all come out as one piece, that likewise means that they were glued together with the oil. But these ones, you can see greasy marks around here where those blades have been overlapping or with the edge of the case but they're, they're not terrible so the blades will need to be cleaned they may need to be polished if those marks won't come out can you see those marks? yeah you can the mechanism plate needs to be stripped down come on camera keep up that's better ok let's have this apart you can unhook the spring this is the little tab that actuates the blade actuating ring it's a bit stiff not too bad but certainly enough to affect the operation of the shutter we'll take that arm off and underneath the retaining plate is held in place with four screws one of them is longer than its mates I'm doing the three short screws first and the long screw sits here yeah those would have been originally held in with some uh, Loctite type compound um, I don't think it's particularly necessary I don't use it and uh, the way those screws came loose I'd say someone's had that off before Here's the blade actuating ring, it's a bit greasy, probably doesn't move as smoothly as it should be. And here's our mechanism plate stripped as far as we need to strip it. Here's our speed train, the retard gear train. I'm holding back the pallets here with my finger, swinging the arm backwards and forwards. That moves quite promptly. That's not a bad example by any means. Um, It'll certainly benefit from cleaning. Now I'll, I'll clean that, I'll flush all that out with naphtha and work it backwards and forwards. I don't take this off to clean it in the ultrasonic cleaner. I don't separate it from the mechanism plate because its position is its adjustment and it, that's very fiddly. Generally speaking if the shutter worked well last time it was serviced there's no reason it shouldn't work well once you've finished servicing it this time. So there's no reason that these adjustments should need to be changed. So just don't is the answer there because otherwise you're just, you're just borrowing trouble. You don't need it. So here, let's get this apart. So I'll swing the lever around until it exposes the two screws here and here. Supporting 
this with my finger from underneath or I can undo those two screws. Both sides. And that frees up the lever. Now I'm looking at the state of the lever. If this was very sticky with grease, then the stiffness in the action of the diaphragm could easily be just the lever. I'm just checking this now. And that's not especially stiff. They'll benefit from a cleaning, but they're not bad. So a lot of the stiffness I've discovered was in that, that piece there. Just the uh, friction. And you need some friction there so it doesn't uh, shift its position unexpectedly for you. But you don't need as much as that. Particularly as this shutter has click stops for the aperture settings. Not very exciting click stops, but click stops nonetheless. If it had none, then you want a bit of friction in that settings arm, otherwise you'd be tending to accidentally knock the uh, aperture settings when you were lifting the camera to your eye, for example. And that would uh, mean that you'd end up with exposure problems. Right, here's our diaphragm blades. Now they will hold together in a rosette, even when they're clean, if it's they're closed right up. You can see quite a bit of the oily marks on these blades, where they've been sitting over the top of each other. And they'll all need to be cleaned. They should be completely free from oil. The retainer plate here looks quite good. Um, it's, there's a few marks and stains on there, nothing exciting at all. Likewise, this moving plate here. That looks fine too. So all of this stuff looks to be in good order. Just needs to be cleaned. Well, the day is racing away. I've been busy cleaning parts. And I'm ready to start reassembling this shutter. The uh, blades were good. They didn't need to be polished. They just needed to be cleaned. The mechanism plate. This retaining plate on the mechanism plate. That was a had a bit big fingerprints etched into it which made the surface rough so I did polish that anyway I've got my diaphragm blades here Let's see if we can get these in place there are 10 blades And the first six are easy to get into position. So let's lay one on top of another. The last four have to be tucked underneath the first few blades, which makes placement awkward. And these, I'm just, I've laid these out carefully so that I get them all in the correct orientation. The blades are not symmetrical. The rivets are closer to the centre line of the blade at one end than the other. And one of those blades I'd picked up and I'd had it laid out the wrong way so I had to put it back down and pick it up again. Okay, that's the first six blades placed. I'm going to pull these ones back to expose the fixture holes for the other ones. That should just about do it. See if we can get these blades in place.
Oops. One more. I'm going to swing these blades back over the top without disturbing anything. That's looking fairly promising. Now the moving plate needs to go on there. This only goes one way up because there's a countersunk hole there that needs to be accessed from the other side. So it goes this way up. And I know from experience that it's going to go right there. I'm going to make sure that those pivots all come up through the slots. That looks fine. And that's held in place with the case. And this only goes on one place, one direction. And it should be there. If I flip that over, I should be able to lift the outside of the jig off, pop it underneath. And it sh I should have my three screw holes visible there. One of those screw holes is countersunk. So you need to get the right screw in there, otherwise things won't go well. Why do they have one countersunk screw? I couldn't tell you that, but I expect that it, uh, that position presumably would foul something on the mechanism plate if the screw head stuck up. If I bother to look for the answer, I'll probably find it. Right, so there's their screws all in place. I'm checking, I can see all of those 10 pivots are correctly in their sockets. So that diaphragm should open and close, and it does. Nice and smoothly. So that's fine, that's great. Now if I position this so that the, uh, the hole here in the bracket lines up through the hole here, I can get the setting lever on the back of that. I'll do that. That setting lever, I'll give that a white with a bit of molybdenum paste lightly and this only goes on well it could go on both ways but if it only goes on one way and works because otherwise the pointer wouldn't be at the bottom of the shutter so I'll get this lined up And get one of the fixing screws in there. I'm supporting this from underneath with the tips of my fingers so, so that the blade at the uh, settings lever is supported. It's not finding the hole, why not? That's better. Okay, they look like they're in place. Now I'll support 
the blade, the uh, settings lever on the piece of wood here so that I've got something to press down against with my screwdriver I can tighten those two screws up. And check the action of my setting lever. That works nice and smoothly. So that's fine. So that's our shutter case with the diaphragm in it. Assembled and working smoothly. And that's ready to... Uh, be mated with the mechanism plate once we put the blades in place. So the mechanism plate's reassembled, it's all clean. I've polished that um, retaining plate there. As I said, there was a bit, bit of corrosion there, etched in fingerprints. I'll just unhook the spring here, swing this to the blade's open position, and I can fit the shutter blades. Now the first shutter blade is different from its mates because it's got an extra hole in it. That's the only difference and it doesn't make any functional difference to the blade. It's simply a way of marking the first blade. So I'll get the five blades in place. Now why would they need to do that? I don't know, that's a secret. Probably it had some function long ago in a previous model and uh, it just continued to be done long after the time when the need for it was over. I suspect that's the case. There's no special reason that you would need to mark one blade because there's a special need for it to be in one position. That doesn't make sense if you don't mark the other blades as well. Okay, so let's get the case over the top. You can line this up easily because we've got our square hole here where the flash sink's going to go, so we can see exactly where this is going to fit. So we can line that up. Line up our three screw holes, and we have three screws that hold the case together. They're identical, and they're common to a lot of Compour shutters. So we'll get the three screws in, but I won't tighten them up until I've tested to make sure that the blades are still correctly placed, that nothing fell out of place while I was lifting the case over the top, for example. You don't want to be damaging a blade. So we'll just check that that's the case. Yep, they swing in nicely. I'll put that spring back in place. And I can tighten up my three case screws. The uh, retard gear train here, that's been flushed out with naphtha repeatedly and lubricated with graphite powder and that runs very nicely. So the shutter's nice and snappy in its action now and the shutter blades, as you can see, look somewhat better than they did. Not so marked. The marks were only superficial. It was only like a, a oily haze and it cleaned away quite nicely. Okay, so that part's good. Start putting the other components back in the shutter. So some of these I'll need to clean up carefully first. The flash contact here I won't need to do much with. But I do need to recover that tiny plastic insulator out of there. Because I'll need to be able to put that in at a later date. So I'll see if I can get that out. It's probably a bit distorted. You might not want to come out of the hole easily. It's certainly reluctant. Yeah, 
that's it. You can see that little black speck, that's pretty small, that's about a millimeter in length and we half that in diameter. Very easily lost, but most important. So the flash contact. This is the uh, earth, if you like, or the ground connection for it. And put this in place. Now getting this down through there is always tricky because it's a square peg you're trying to get through a square hole which should be good except the square peg is very rarely square. The plastic is uh, a styrene or something like that. It tends to have suffered a bit with age. It's almost always slightly split and so it doesn't want to go down through the hole. It's worth taking your time to make sure that it does get in the hole because as with anything that's about 70 years old, finding spare parts is very difficult because all the things that break routinely have been replaced with all the available spare parts over the last uh, three quarters of a century. Right, so that's our fixed contact there. And start putting these other bits back in place. I'll start by cleaning up some of these pieces. Need to make sure that they're free from any oils or grit or anything, dust, anything that's potentially going to create a nuisance but grease, grease, old grease is typically your worst enemy because it goes sticky, it goes sticky with age and uh, you know, it can change will change quite quickly from one state to another from being a lubricant to being a glue this is the bee lever here, I'm just giving that a wipe that can break, occasionally you'll find a shutter with that broken and of course the typical symptom is that you set the camera to B but you just get a shutter speed of probably about a 60th of a second or something or 120th breath. These parts are all pretty clean, which is nice of course. But you have to check everything, make sure that, don't assume that everything's going to be good. Don't assume that 100% of it's going to be good just because the 20% you looked closely at was good. Those bits look good. Right, start putting some of these pieces together. This is the 500th of a second speed spring. It's what gives the shutter its impetus to provide that fastest speed. Here are the pallets for the flash sink. this little cam I usually put a wipe of molybdenum paste around the toe of that cam so that the flash sink lever runs smoothly across it because it's quite a steep cam and uh, you know things don't always move as quickly as you'd like Put our flash contact in place. This is the moving flash contact. And then making sure that our 500 of the second speed spring passes through underneath there smoothly. And it's held in place with a single screw.
here's the if you watch the flash contact point there as this cam comes around you'll see that it makes and breaks that there you like that Seems fine. Now this little lever needs to go in. This is a two-piece construction. This one hasn't fallen apart, so I don't need to do anything to that. It's just held together with a spring. Holds this top section to that section. And it's just when it comes apart, it's a bit awkward fighting with your tweezers to get it all connected up. I've got to get, make sure that this is in the right position so that the flash sink does what the flash sink is supposed to do. So when I've got this arm across there so that I can get this piece locked underneath it, that would be the cocked position, the toe of this lever should move down the side of that cam and it does. And as that's driven it should move the flash contact. Now it looks like I'm a tooth out there, let's take that back a tooth. Where am I? No, I need to be round a bit further than that. That's it. I might even be right the first time. So the, we need to get the spring on here, onto that, from that point there to that point there. This can be a bit awkward. I need a stiff pair of tweezers. It's in place now. This lever is across in the locked, the cocked position, so it's holding this lever in place. If you press that now, up, that would release this and allow that to run down, which we don't want to happen. Okay, two brass standoffs here and here, and then the cover plate, which I haven't cleaned yet. 